40 CEOs drive your ambition. Brought to you by Mitsubishi. Adebola Williams is a Nigerian media entrepreneur, journalist, political activist, and motivational speaker. He is the group CEO of Red. He co founded and runs Red Africa, Africa's largest portfolio of youth media brands, which include Red Media Africa, Statecraft Inc., The Future Awards Africa, and whyniger.com. His career in media and television began at the Nigerian Television Authority with advocacy for youth and eventually good governance. Described as the man with the golden touch by Ghana's president, Nana Akufuado, he was profiled by Forbes as the man who helped elect a trifecta of presidents in Africa. Okay, thank you for taking this ride with me, Debola. Thanks for having me. All right, My man. Pleasure. All right, so tell me, how did you get started on this uh, CEO journey of yours? Mm -hmm. mm. Such a such a big, vast, you know, journey that sometimes I find it hard to be able to put it into words. Um, but you know, as you grow older, your story gets. Um, it makes more meaning, it gets more meaningful. Mm. And I think that's what I'm finding out. So usually when I speak about my entrepreneurship journey, I would say I've been an entrepreneur for about 18 years. But recently I realized that in actual fact, no, I was first an entrepreneur at nine. Mm. And I've been on this entrepreneurial journey for 24 years. Uh, because at nine, I had a farmland in front of my house wow. at the time. And my cousins also had a piece of land next to each other. And the first deal I remember making, I'm sure at some point in my life, I'll get some more clarity into my background, and this story might, might, might change a bit. You know, but what I remember as I speak to you now is that I negotiated with them to merge our lands together, such that we didn't have a bigger space to plant on. So instead of me having one small space, I'm planting small yam, small whatever, and they're planting a little bit, we joined our farmlands together and we could plant yam on one side, tomatoes on another side, and vegetables on another side. And that was my first introduction to partnership. And you know that I've been in a partnership now for about 14, for you know, yeah. active, by all my journey basically. So at nine was when I negotiated my first partnership deal with my cousins on the farmland. So I've always been, you know, in, in a partnership, you know, leading businesses, with friends. Um, when I formed my first registered company, um, B&E Initiative, Bolland Emilia Initiative, this was probably 2003, That's I another think. partnership. It was another partnership. <laughs> okay. It was another partnership. Mm. What we wanted to do at the time was to create media platforms that were mm. outlets for young people. We were tired of people speaking for us. Mm. We wanted to own the platforms and speak our own voice, our own pain, our own aspirations you know, by ourselves. But one thing that always been clear with me and my life and my journey, which is the fact that I always had, I always revolved around the media. Because I believe that the media always gave you a bigger platform to reach a bigger audience. Mm. So for me, the media was always important in everything that we, we did. Um, um, so, so the CEO journey really began from there. And you know, anyone who becomes a CEO now, it's not just about what you've done in the last two or three years. True. It's the journey of their entire life mm. that has led them to where they've come. You know, and, and so the entirety of my life, you know, my experiences, the opportunities I've had in learning from others, to see the things they did right, to understand why they did the things they did, and to also see their failings, mm. and to learn not to fail the same way. You know, so that, that, that kind of like encapsulates, you know, the, the journey. All right, so with particular reference to failing mm. um, and failure, I'm sure 
yes, it must have been um, a little jerky, you know, um, building the media, you know, empire that you've built so far. Um, tell me about the process of stabilizing as a business. Hmm. You know, it's interesting. I said something this morning. I have a... I have a thing I do on Instagram on Monday. It's called Monday Morning Motivation. Mm -hmm. And I, I do one on Friday called Friday Fast Forward mm -hmm. on my handle at Debola Lagos. And this morning I posted about the man who complains about the lack of hope, hope. as if it's for his hunger, mm -hmm. will die hungry. Mm -hmm. So it's stabilizing our business. Mm -hmm. For us, it's always been a mission. And we've always focused on solving the problems we're here to solve and always focus on being the best at it such that after a while that process became valuable and in creating value we're able to then pull resources because value will give you resources either financial capital relationship once you provide value you can get all the resources you're looking for but not just that Relationships are important. When you don't have money, you will always have human beings. You might not have a whole cutlass, rake. You have human beings who own holes, rakes, cutlasses. And I use a lot of analogy around farming because I believe that life is about growth. And it's a journey from seed to table, seed to fruit. And if only people paid attention to that technology, they would be more patient in life and will do everything they can to become the coconut tree that will forever bring our fruits. So looking back now, um, is there any business decision you made that you've had to back up from? You know, was it Jeff Bezos that said that when you hear of one of his businesses that succeed, he's probably had about 50 others. You know, every great entrepreneur. I'm all the businesses I hear Dangote has today. I'm sure that there are tons that we don't hear that he's done. So even in our journey, we've also, you know, tried quite a lot of things that at some point we thought, this has met its purpose, pack it up mm. and move. So for us, you know, we've done a number of things that we've also put to the side, mm. you know, but nothing we've done that we look back and we regret. We've all been great learning experiences, great impact for when they were here. You know, we had a magazine, you know, a physical magazine, mm -hmm. you know, which was fantastic for the time it was here, we packed that up. You know, like many other people too. You had a physical magazine as well, yes. which is packed up. Mm -hmm. You know, so several plot people had those physical magazines. But when we created our magazine, it met its purpose. Mm -hmm. It enjoyed its ride, mm -hmm. you know. So for us to try to at least ensure that, you know, this thing meets the purpose, enjoys the time that's here. You know, and, and we are all in this journey of trying to find the things that we we'll do that would we'll be like the apples and the googles. Okay, so um, tell me about that one uh, business decision you made, uh, which you found to be wrong, or it just wasn't working at the time, and how you managed to maneuver and then, you know, uh, make it a better story. One business decision that we took that wasn't right at the time. I've got to tell you that we've, we've, I think it's because of how we are. So we, we're very, we are, we are such hopeless, hopeful people. We're such hopeless, ho hopeful. Yeah. We're <laughs> such hopeless optimists that, you know, I'm not sure if we saw something. If we did something and we and we and we and we and we and we went back and thought, you know, because we're so hopeful, we always wait for time to mature. Mm -hmm. And as time matures, things get clear and it shows that you either couldn't have done anything better, or this is just the result of what you did and, and just keep going. But we don't stay back and really regret and waste our time. Okay. So what qualities do you typically look out for when uh, when hiring? When hiring. I, I, I want to check on the mind of the person. I ask what kind of books do you read? 
what do you think about you know different situations that might not have anything to do with the role in question i'm looking for excellence you know in in spirit in output i'm looking for knowledge of the industry um, but sometimes i also say that knowledge of the industry might not be the be all because sometimes everything just needs process systems and structures and when you put systems in place regardless of what the business is is all about output once everyone is committed passionate have the willpower have the right spirit for excellence then the other things are just to learn mm -hmm. it's just to train them yeah, the rest skills is training that can be learned. yes skills acquisition it's mm -hmm. just to train them mm. right so tell me about how do you typically cool off uh, what do i do to cool off i i, I like high energy sports so I like to jump out of a plane. Oh. Um, Have you ever like, done that? I've actually done it once. Okay. Um, I, I plan to do it again later in the year. Um, and even if I did it once, I tried to do it like six times. It just wouldn't work. The weather, there was always a reason I couldn't do it. Oh, wow. So I'm like, I will do this thing. I, 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 I like jet ski. Oh, I, like, yeah. I love water sports. Yeah. Um, jet ski, um, I like to go on the boat, to ride the boat, to drive the, is it ride, drive the boat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I like to do that. Um, yeah, so, you know, those high energy sports, basically. What's your favorite jam? It, it, it changes, but what do I listen to at night yeah. um, when I want to sleep? Uh, probably some classics, probably some Etta James, some Ray Charles, um, Kenny Rogers. Those are my, you know, my nighttime um, music. Um, I love Ray Charles so very much. And in the morning, I, I, I wake up to, you know, worship songs. Um, um, either I sing by myself or Nathaniel Bassi. I love T.Y. Bellows' spontaneous worship. Um, uh, particularly favorite are the ones with Tokwe Alabi. Uh, recently, um, you know, Nathaniel is one of my most favorite um, um, worship leaders. So, lastly, I'd like to know, Dibola, what drives your ambition? So, so we've been driven most of our lives by by desire to solve problems. Um, and, and when I speak about hope, I don't take it lightly because my life is, is, is a life that's been driven by hope. And um, I've always hoped that things would work if I put myself, I put my heart in it, if I work hard, if I go out, connect to people, find opportunities. So hope is my driving force. Thank you for having me. Masilia Motors, sole distributors of Mitsubishi Motors in Nigeria.